I'm Harry Gregson Williams. I'm the composer of the score for Mulan. One's always trying to get to the core of the matter, the emotional core of, of any scene, follow the emotional arc, if you like, of a character. Whether they're penguins or chickens or ants or Shreks or whatever they are. So in this movie, you know, it's all about Mulan. Everything is from Mulan's point of view. A lot of the first six months of working on this film was finding the balance between my own style, where I would naturally go, and the fact that this movie is set in ancient China. So in order to get my demo sounding good, because that's basically what the first port of call is. I remember my old mate Hans Zimmer used to drum it into me that uh, you want to be a successful film composer, you know, the first thing is that you've got to collaborate with, that you've got to let the filmmakers into your world. It was critical for me on this project to be able to not just show Nicky, the director, but actually educate myself as to how, how I was going to deploy these Chinese instruments. Speaking to a really good old friend of mine, mentor of mine, Richard Harvey, a great English composer and really amazing instrumentalist, and he always loved his ethnic instruments, be it you know, from any part of the world. So I picked up the phone to him and said, look, man, what, um, what could I do about this? I mean, there are various libraries out there, but I don't, I don't really buy them. I don't, I, don't, I don't like the sound of a lot of it. It's, it's sort of uh, not quite right. He said, well, I'm about to do a series of, of uh, library for orchestral tools. And they were thinking they'd do a Chinese sample library. But I tell you what, if I asked them if they would do that first, as opposed to in a couple of years' time, and let you use it um, for Mulan, and they released it after Mulan, um, everybody's in a win-win situation. So I said, man, that sounds absolutely phenomenal. So he went away and organized that with orchestral tools. The orchestral tools guys were really lovely about it and said, look, that'd be fine. We'll give you the library, we'll come present it to you. You can ask us for any tweaks or whatever, and then go ahead and use it. So that's exactly what happened. And uh, it was great for me because I, it was, I was able to delve into you know, various instruments that I knew of the existence of these instruments, but I hadn't scored a Chinese film before. And I had to learn a little bit about their capabilities, their ranges, the manner that they play, whether they could play trem, uh, whether plucking was the right way to go, or bowing, or whatever it was. Now, it was like having a canvas and having someone give you an extra bunch of colours to paint with. And it really made a huge difference to the writing for me. What really stands out to me is the quality of the playing. Beautiful and, and recording. Some of the sounds I didn't bother replacing because they're just beautiful. Fortunate enough to be working on a film where, from a budget point of view, you know, Disney were going to, you know, came up with the money to be able to record everybody and everything that I wanted to do. Um, so with some of the Chinese lead instruments, uh, the, I, in my demos I'd be using orchestral tools, samples. With all of the parts, whether they be Gazang or, or Erhu or uh, the Zhao, any of these instruments, we found Chinese players here who brought them into the studio and, and recorded them. And I'd get their recordings back to, to bass here and put them in my key bass. <laughs> I kind of preferred the way the orchestral tools sounded. And I challenge you to, to point to which ones those are. Usually I'd, I'll start at the piano and, oh my goodness, <laughs> and scratch something out. This is an E minor here. I felt like I could have this thing trickling along get the idea but running through all that I thought I'd have so you get the idea um, so now if we go over to my computer we'll, we can actually hear and see what how I came from this to that that's probably going to be an F sharp minor this is an E minor can't remember why that is so let's go over here and see but I thought the accompaniment could be something um, a little trickling thing and Gazeng seemed to be about the right instrument for that so I've got the the key switch version here So I had this a dee da 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 dum ba da 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 dum. I imagine that as my accompaniment, and then I flick down here to the old jaw. So 
So this isn't exactly the right range. We certainly had a Gazang player come in. We certainly had a Zhao player come in. But as I told you on occasions, I just preferred. Pretty inspiring sound. I mean, I, I love it, I love it, I love it. If I were advising someone who was not very experienced, um, uh, using these Chinese instruments, I'd, um, I mean, I'd classify myself as that. I, you know, I might be an experienced film composer, but I've not dabbled in the very deep in the Chinese uh, instruments. So, I mean, another guy might tell you, yeah, I think you should go away and read this book, that book, you should look this up and give yourself six weeks to learn about this before you touch, the, uh, touch them. But I'd say, mm, go in and touch them straight away and, and fly around and see what you find. <laughs> 